if we haven't told you before, RV life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. That's right. And why does stuff always happen to break on travel days? Yeah. Okay, RV life is not always easy. So this is Tara climbing across. Oh yeah. We're actually looking through the slide right now. Yeah. We're getting hit by several things in, in one 24-hour period. We may have the slides in for the next couple of days. Um, still have the hydraulic problem. We think it's a valve. The travel day from hell continues. Mm. And I heard a drip, 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 drip. So there's a leak somewhere in there. Recently, we had two travel days in a row to get to our next destination. And like always, we stopped at a rest area to have some lunch, and that's when problem number one happened. Yeah, we like to stop at rest areas and put the slide out on this side. Yeah. So we can get to the microwave, we can sit at the table, have a nice little lunch together. And we went to do that, we push the button for the slides, and the jacks go down. <laughs> so, like you've probably seen, when we stop for lunch, we like to maybe put just the passenger side slide out so it's not interfering, but we can sit and have lunch. But when I press the button for our slides, the jacks go down. Yeah. So I was just on the phone with Grand Design. They're not sure. I'm going to do a little more troubleshooting when we get to our tonight's stopover. Yeah, we might be we might, we, we might sleeping have, like this. Yeah, the, the, this is yet another argument for being able to get to everything. What's going on? Just ah, what? Did you just get stung? Yeah. F be in my shirt. Oh. I saw that guy flying around too. I'm sorry. Let me look. Let me look. That was our first clue. This might be a rough couple of days. Yeah. This makes the case for accessibility with the slides in, which was very important to us when choosing an RV. Mm -hmm. It's because we know that we prefer to use our own facilities and we wanted to be able to get to the refrigerator and to the bedroom with the slides in. And the bathroom. Thankfully, we could do that. Yeah, so even with the slides stuck in, we weren't completely incapacitated there. Tara did have to climb across the island a couple yeah. of times to get to that side of the RV to turn on the heat mm -hmm. and get to Daisy's food because we forgot it. Good thing, so, good thing we like each other because we're in close quarters. Poor guy. So I, I called the main number and I talked to Dwayne. Yeah, I walked through a couple of troubleshooting things. We're going to do some more, but uh, maybe find a mobile tank where we're headed in Charleston. Yes, and um, they've been on, they were on the phone with you for quite a while too, so they spent the time trying to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's just really important for you guys to know that when we call in, we don't, they don't know who we are. They don't know that we're grand design ambassadors and, and all that, so. And it's actually good that way because it allows us to, you know, check and see how the customer service is doing too, because we always brag about it. So, Called him up, worked through a couple of troubleshooting things that we'll cover a little bit more later. We headed to our overnight destination, which was just an RV park off the interstate. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we'll use harvest hosts, things like that. It's but convenient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was good. We were in a nice big cement pull through site so I could maybe do some troubleshooting. Yeah. And that's what we did. We got there and I got Grand Design back on the line again and we did some basic troubleshooting. We're at our site and. Chad's gonna give it a go. I manually leveled as close as I could. It seems like there's a problem with a solenoid that routes hydraulic, closes off the hydraulic for the front landing gear because whenever I apply positive lifting force to any any hydraulic system, whether I try light, right or left or rear, the front still come up. Cool. So yeah, that's great. That's where we are. This is one thing I, I like about things breaking. It's, it's there's, yeah. not, there's not a lot to like, but I enjoy the challenge, which is, you know, we've mentioned being handy with tools and troubleshooting various things when you full-time RV. And this was one of those situations where I was gonna get to experiment and explore and learn <laughs> yeah. about hydraulic systems. I don't like the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I do, and I, it was actually kind of cool. But the way these things work is you've got a hydraulic pump and you've got a manifold with some switches in it down there. 
that's just a fancy way to say the hydraulic pump sends hydraulic fluid to this place sometimes and to this place other times. So what we figured the problem probably was is a valve on our front landing gear. And the two front landing gear are tied together, meaning it goes through one jack and then to the other, which is why if you've put your RV down, if you have one of these Lippert systems, you'll notice that one comes down, then the other one comes down, and they operate mm -hmm. together but independent, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with the, the back and middle jacks on the right and the back and middle jacks on the left. There are three different valves that will open and close to control those. Well, the one on the front landing gear we thought was stuck open. And there are ways to work around that. We tried those. It's basically just turning a, a hex head inside the valve to manually close it, uh, but that didn't work. So we were stuck at a full overnight with no slides. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you know, I can laugh at it now. And I remember even saying, we're going to laugh at this once this is long over, mm -hmm. but it wasn't fun at the time, of course, because everything's closed up and so you really are confined to just the bedroom and the bathroom and this little area right here well yeah <laughs> yes poor daisy doesn't know what to do right now neither do i daisy may hey here's what it looks like in here mm -hmm. and it's a mess and i can't get in there to clean it numerous times having to climb over the kitchen island trying to figure out dinner luckily chipotle delivered <laughs> yeah, that's right I so, forgot about that. yeah so we had dinner in bed which was mm -hmm. a first and also for the record our bedroom slide is a schwintech slide it's electrical it's not tied to the hydraulic system at all so that went out fine yeah so we could move around in the bedroom like normal so that was good right at least we had that yeah so while he was trying to figure out the problem with the jack slash slide issue, I'm running the water and things like that. And that's when we noticed problem number two or mm -hmm. potential problem number two. So that was an interesting night. Well, the co we couldn't get the coffee maker out of the cabinet. <laughs> so <laughs> that makes for a bad morning. Maybe that's why we're both grumpy pants. That's true, we are both cranky pants. And then last night, our water pump keeps cycling, which means there's a leak and I could hear it dripping down there. So as soon as we get to Charleston, I gotta tear the basement apart. I went outside and opened the door to listen to the bay <laughs> where the pump was. And I could hear when the pump would cycle on and back off out of here, vroom, drip, 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 drip. So I was like, oh yeah, there's a leak somewhere. Yeah. So that's obviously not good. So we did the mitigation thing where we just turned the pump off, relieved the pressure, and we figured we'd deal with it. And these pumps are designed to come on when you turn on the water, pressure releases, and the pump comes on. When you shut it off, it shuts off. It's not supposed to just come on by itself every now and then. Without the water being on. <laughs> Without the water being on. Yeah. And that's what it was doing. So we knew there must be a problem somewhere because for the pump to come on, pressure has to be released, which means water is going somewhere. And the water pump is located down in like the front bay area. So, you know, of course we don't want any water leaking in there. Right. And we do have some water detection down in there from our ring alarm system. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't picking anything up. So what we decided to do was just mitigate the problem for now and turn the pump on when we need it and turn it off when we need it. And when we turn it off, we also relieve the pressure. That way there's no pressure in the system feeding the leak wherever it may be. So we really didn't want to mess around with troubleshooting much at the overnight stop. Yeah. We figured just we'll deal with it when we get to our next location. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. Do we just not even try to get the slides out because in, for fear of messing them up and getting them stuck and just put uh, it back in and deal with it? Yeah and Grand Design was pretty confident that the valve was bad, so they went ahead and sent one to our target location. At this point, we have a pretty good idea on the hydraulics, and we have no idea on the water where the leak is. <laughs> we know it's somewhere down there. Yeah. And then day two of travel. Mm -hmm. Went pretty normal. We stopped for lunch again. Mm -hmm. uh, did the whole thing with the slides in again, with Tara climbing back and forth yeah. across the island again. Again. <laughs> and... After our lunch break, we we're driving along and we both get notices on our phones uh, from both our Marcel and our Ring alarm system that power is out. 
we run with our inverter on to power our fridge, but the whole RV is powered, so our network systems and all mm -hmm. that. Marcel is a thing we use to monitor both temperature, humidity, and power mm -hmm. for Daisy when we're not home. It communicates through cellular and tells yeah. us when there's problems. And of course, our ring alarm is powered and it tells us when the power's out. Yes. So we both got the notice at the same time and now we're like, what now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got to a rest area, we pulled over. I came in, took a look. Sure enough, the inverter was just off. Uh, battery power was still good. And we figured, okay, um, <laughs> got something else to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. So that's problem number three. Unfortunately, that meant we had to put the refrigerator back on propane, which we don't really care to do when we're traveling, but we didn't have that much further to go. Yeah, we've covered that topic before of whether or not to travel with your propane on, and we're not going to go into that. We'll put a link below that, to where we talk about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we prefer to travel with our propane shut off if we can. Right. Sometimes it's not possible, like this. Yeah. We don't want to travel with the refrigerator off. Some people think it can stay cold. It can't. It can't. <laughs> this morning, when we were packing up to leave, because it was a weird night, we got our slides in and we were basically on the hitch and just sitting there all night. Tara had to climb over last night over the top of the island to turn on the heat pump. So we had heat last night. This morning when we got going, it wasn't a normal situation with the slides in and being on the hitch. We were kind of just packing up and going. Totally forgot that step. Forgot to turn off the heat pump. Well, we run with our inverter on and the fridge was on. So at some point while we were driving, we both got alerts. The power went out. I'm assuming what happened is the fridge was going, the heat pump kicked on, that quick surge of power because, you know, it wasn't stagger started like we would normally do. And it blew the fuse. Mm -hmm. So finally we arrive at our destination, which was Jane's Island County Park in Charleston. And thankfully we had a very large site. Yeah, it was a nice, it was a dirt site. They're all dirt sites, uh, but it was long enough that we could be on the hitch in our site, which mm -hmm. was good because we knew we were going to have to troubleshoot the hydraulics, which meant we were probably going to have to be on the hitch to get the jacks up yeah. and work on it. So, so that worked out mm -hmm. in our favor. <laughs> so first order of business was to troubleshoot power. And I thought when we hooked up shore power, we'd be fine and I could worry about that later. Nope. Nope. <laughs> not, mm. not so. It turns out, uh, and this may be true for other inverters as well, but our go power, in order for the relay to switch and pass through power, even if it's not inverting, if it's only charging, it needs the DC power to operate. Much like our AC units, our air conditioning. If we have AC power, that powers the ACs, but we don't have DC power, which operates the little control panel, none of it works. Mm -hmm. So first order of business was to call Go Power and talk to Bob. <laughs> yeah, you actually had another really good experience. I called Go Power, I get right through to a person. We troubleshot it down to a blown fuse, which thankfully. We've, yeah. Which we've never blown before. It's a big 300 amp fuse. You can see the heat damage on there for the blue. We started thinking about when the heat pump kicked on, which is basically an AC in reverse, the compressor kicks on and it had a rush of current through that fuse and blew it. Mm -hmm. And those fuses aren't like a lot of fuses. I could tell after looking at it that it was blown, but it's not like a fuse where you have the, the thing break in the middle. Mm -hmm. I had to meter it out and then I confirmed with Bob, yes, you got to have DC power. So that turned out to be an easy fix. Uh, I just bypassed it and that wasn't that difficult. Uh, just to move the cable from the switched and fused side right down to the bus bars. Right there is the bad fuse and basically the, the DC power routes from the battery right here up to that switch through the bus and then that cable there goes up to there and then it goes through the fuse through the switch and then to the inverter. So all I have to do, take this line that is running through all of that protective mechanism, bypass it by moving this down to here. I now have the wire out of here, straight to the bus bar. We did take care to turn down our charging amperage and we weren't going to be inverting. So I knew that it was pretty safe to bypass that fuse temporarily. So I clicked order on a couple of fuses from Amazon. It's good to have a spare, turns out. And we moved on to problem number two. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, all the fuses down there the same? There's only one. 
Oh, so there's only one fuse that could have there's, blown there. Yeah, there's, oh, only, okay. there's only one big 300 amp fuse gotcha. uh, for the high amperage DC side of okay. the inverter. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh. And I didn't have a spare of that because when I had looked at it in the past, it's an expensive fuse. The fuse block and everything together was like a hundred and something dollars. How much is the fuse itself? I found the fuse by itself for like, I think it was like $25. Okay. Yeah. And so we I, got an extra. Yeah. That's good. Cool. So the next order of business was to troubleshoot the slides. We wanted to get our slides out. Now that we're oh. in our, now that we're in our camping spot yes. for two weeks, we wanted to get the slides out. Yes. I'm in the queue for Lippert support. You call that main number. They even have after hours somebody who's there to uh, help you out in emergencies because that's usually when they happen is after hours. We went through a lot of the same steps that Grand Design already had us go through with the physical bypass of turning the little screw to close the valve and that didn't work. We also tried putting the jacks down and hoping that once they hit the ground, that that would be enough back pressure on that system to let hydraulic fluid get to the slides. Didn't really work. The jacks kept wanting to come up and we were still on the hitch and we couldn't really make that work. So option number two to get the slides out was going to be to swap the valves. Take the bad stuck open valve on the front jacks, swap it to the valve for the slides, and it, let it be open and open the slides up. Mm. Then I got to thinking about our first try at putting the jacks down. And I wondered if I let the jacks go all the way down and just bottom out, because then no hydraulic fluid can go in there, would that damage them at all? Would that, would that be a problem? So I called Lippert back, told them my idea, and they said, no, that should be fine. It should work okay. Lippert said, that shouldn't be a problem. It should be fine. So we're going to find out. I am going to connect to the one control here, make sure I'm on the right Wi-Fi. So we got off the hitch, let the front jacks go all the way up and bottom out, and ooh, the slides went out. It's working. The, uh, the jacks really didn't even go up that much. Main slide is coming out. <laughs> So I didn't have to do any swapping around of, of valves and have hydraulic fluid and stuff all over yeah. the place, which was good. I'm glad you thought of that. Yeah. So that worked well, and but I couldn't figure out why this slide wouldn't go out. No, oh, that's just... <laughs> Remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Strange that only one slide came out and the other one's not. But I think that will make Tara happy tonight. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hey. Um... You know, just the main, the, just this main slide came out, right? Yeah, would that be enough for tonight? If that's all we got, then that's better than nothing. Yeah, I don't know why I ran the jacks all the way out, and now it's making a really bad noise. I heard it. Yeah. I mean, we can make do. I just don't know. If, I mean, I can't use the oven and stuff, but. Yeah, I just don't. I don't know why the uh, theoretically these slides off. Oh, yeah. I'm an idiot. Hold on. You're not an idiot. I just forgot to open this friggin' valve. Duh. Oh. Oh no. If you have systems like ours where the two slides operate together, these slides are connected just like the pair of landing gear in the front and just like the pair on the right and the left side. They operate together. One goes and the other one goes. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get only one slide to operate is to lock out the slide you don't want to move and we have a video on that also. Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, so we had that locked out as soon as <laughs> as soon as I unlocked it, the slide went out. It's we like, good. what next? Yeah. So we've got problem one and two worked out mm -hmm. and we got a, a, a valve on order for the jacks. We got a fuse on order for the power and it was time to look at the water. Right. But you had a better idea. So Tara had a great idea. I did. Which is drink beer. <laughs> It deserves now, it. Rather than worry about that water leak tonight, we're just going to use our pump, turn it on when we need it, shut it off when we're not using it. Uh, not even going to hook up to water, uh, not even going to hook up to sewer yet because we're fine. I think and, that he did plenty today and he deserves a break. So uh, she's, she's right. That is my official rule. So rather than empty out the basement and try to find that, I'll worry about that tomorrow. I mean, yeah. the poor guy just drove for two straight days and has to problem solve three different issues. So. I like this stuff, though. I was so excited to learn about the hydraulic system. He was so excited to have stuff break. <laughs>
But now I know how the thing works, yeah. so in the future, I don't have to call it. It's cool, though, because now we can tell them and hopefully help you guys if you run into some of these problems. Which reminds me, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and please click the like button, and you can follow us on social media as well. So the next day, it was time to troubleshoot the water situation, uh, which means I have to get down into the belly of the beast, yeah. which means I had to empty out the basement, which is okay. It had been a while. It needed to be cleaned anyway. Uh, yeah. And pull the wall down, and I can see that there's water down there. It's a small area right under the pump. Of course, the pump sits here, and the water was kind of here, and our water sensor was over here. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, I learned that I needed to move that, but I saved that for obviously later. Yeah. After a bit of troubleshooting down there, I did determine that it was the pump itself leaking somewhere inside the body, and I was okay because I wanted to replace the pump anyway. Well, this was already a pump that you had replaced from the original stock. Yes. Okay. The pump that comes with the RV is okay, but I like power. Yeah, but I swear, Chad, I think that that one was too powerful because when it would run, the whole RV would shake. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And it was loud and it vibrated so hard that I always kind of cringed every yeah. time we used it that it was like, it was too powerful. Yeah. It pumped okay, but it, it cycled. And that's yeah. another problem with RV pumps is sometimes you turn on the water and it gets enough, it relieves enough pressure to pump the water, but then shuts itself off and then on and then off and then your water kind of pulsates. Uh, and this did not solve that. It was more powerful than our old one, but like our old one, it only had one speed. All the way on or all the way off. So I did a little bit of research and I found a pump that was pretty expensive, it was like 200 bucks, but it is a variable pump, meaning it will only come on just enough to get the water flow. And then if you turn on another faucet, it cranks it up. If you turn that faucet off, it cranks it back down. Uh, that was the theory at least. I liked that theory. So I ordered the pump and put a one of our wash tubs that collapses. I just kind of slid that under the pump so it could catch water. And I just checked it every day mm -hmm. or two until the new pump came I in. I think you had to dump it a couple times a day. So at this point, we've got all three problems identified and bypassed. Yes, so the next day, the valve came in. Yeah, so our valve came in from Grand Design, and that was super easy. It's like, I was all worried about getting hydraulic fluid all over the place. It wasn't bad at all. I did have to pull all the jacks up though, which meant I had to hook the truck up, but that wasn't bad. What I think will happen here is I will be able to unscrew this and then pull this part off yeah, it's already getting loose. But yeah, this slides right off, leaving the valve. This thing came in two bags because you'd obviously don't want to get any contamination or stuff in here. So I'm going to keep this part sealed until I'm ready to put it in because this will just go right in and then bolt on. Hopefully this doesn't spew all over the place. I'm gonna have this one ready to go, just in case it starts spewing fluid. Not too bad, didn't come out too much. This is usually the part where I drip hydraulic fluid on my clothes and make Tara angry. I'll try not to do that this time. Guess that's it. It really was not that difficult at all to hook this sucker back up. I'm going to cycle these front jacks a few times just to get fluid through that, that, uh, that valve. Now I should be able to run the auto level procedure after I get off the hitch. So I'm going to put the stairs up, get off the hitch and run auto level. And maybe we'll call this particular fix done. That'd be nice. All righty. Let's run auto level, see what happens. Those jacks coming down and the fronts aren't moving. That is a good sign. Holy crap, I just fixed the hydraulic system. 
and that was it. That was done. We could finally hit auto level and be truly level. And then we had like Gosh, I, five days of rain. Yeah, four or five days of rain. And I'm talking rain. Matt, completely underwater. It's a good thing you sat the wood out to dry the other day on the picnic table, because it looks... It's doing great. It's doing great. <laughs> it's doing great. Yeah, this wasn't like, oh, I'll go outside in between when it's sprinkling and get some of these things fixed. Even if you wanted to, our whole site became flooded. Mm -hmm. And so we were in the middle of a giant puddle. Yeah, we were about to start loading the animals two by two into our RV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so after those days of rain, we finally received the fuses. The fuse replacement, super simple. Two bolts, pop it on, move the wire back. Not much to that. and the water pump was super easy too. The uh, connections are all the same as the old pump. All I had to do was cut the wires, pull the old pump out, crimp the new wires, put the hoses on, and that was it. Good. So another quick RV 101 thing is it's a good idea to have some plumbing tools on hand just in case you ever have a leak. I had some PEX tools for when I replaced the pump the first time and put in the accumulator tank and what's the accumulator tank what does it do yeah. so basically an accumulator tank takes some of the pressure from the pump and stores it and that way when you go to turn on a faucet that initial rush can come from that accumulator tank and doesn't have to wait for the pump to spin up hmm. to replace the pump i did not need any tools other than crimping for the wires and that was a real simple one and let me tell you this pump it's is so awesome good. It's, it's, so good. <laughs> it's so good the pump ramped up just enough to pump the water, and then I went and turned on the water faucet in the bathroom, and you could hear the pump ramp it up. This thing didn't miss a beat. Yeah. They were both flowing, and I could turn them on and turn them off. Oh, it's, it's, it's and awesome. And that showers. Oh my gosh, it's the best wow. shower pressure. Yeah. It's, it's like I want to use the pump every time I wash my hair. Mm -hmm. But obviously, depending on how you use it, it will pump a lot of your water very fast. Yeah. So if you're boondocking, you need to make sure you self-regulate at the faucets and not turn them on all the way. And if you're wondering about the water leak down there and what it damaged, it wasn't too bad. It was. It seemed like what was happening was it was leaking right under the pump and then it was seeping through the screws. A lot of the water was staying on top of the linoleum down there, but it did get into that wood a little bit, and but only a small area and none of that area is load bearing or anything. So I'm gonna, secure it up down there a little bit yeah. more later, but the, there was really no significant damage to right. speak of, which Luckily, is awesome. Luckily we caught it. Yeah, and I moved our ring water sensor to where <laughs> the water was. So if it does it again, we'll know immediately next time. And that's it. Those are the three problems that we solved. I should say that he solved. You know, we're a team, we solved together. I didn't really do it. Yeah. I just complained about it. <laughs> you, but you had the beer idea. I do. Well, that, was, that made up for a lot. First off, I don't know. I guess you might use this mode in maybe biking. I don't know why that's even there. We're on a direct flight path right over our RV. I don't think so. Hey, do you stay there? So what do you think of our morning so far? It's awesome. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Of course there's a leaf blower. <laughs> Are you serious? There's some, some old, tiny bits of water on top of the little, the little note. I do see some tiny pot top. We're just going to talk over this leaf blower and deal with it. Yeah. It seems like the couple of times we've had issues, they come in like two or three. I can't stop hearing the leaf blower though. Had a pretty rough couple of travel days where three things, three things. Oh, we were doing Damn, so, so good, good. too. Uh, just crank the thing and just blow the leaves and be done with it. <laughs>
Hey, you better get cracking on the next project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, started back up. Awesome. Let me see if he's coming this way. You want to have weight. <laughs> I'm going to war. I'm ours, going to war. Ours is electric, though. It's not quite as annoying. <laughs> no, I know.